Well, it's the first morning of our week of everything we eat on the homestead. And today we're starting off with omelets. We have the kids with us this weekend and the kids are a little bit picky. Oddly enough, they don't eat just fried eggs, but if we make it into an omelet or quiche, they love it. So that's what we're doing this morning. And we're starting off with red onion from the pantry. Uh, pepperoni. Now we always kind of keep a stick of pepperoni for pizzas, things like that, and it's starting to get a little bit old, so we're using just a little bit of that, not very much. And actually some green onion, which grew off of one of the onions that was in storage down in the uh, pantry. Our go-to of frozen peppers, fermented salsa, and the best part of an omelet, of course, cheese. So, we're going to get this made up and get everybody fed, but we'll show you what it looks like before we eat. And there we go. Breakfast is served. And we use just enough toast that I've got to make some more bread in a moment. But we're going to eat this first. And, of course, the most important part is perked and ready to go. And that's coffee! So, today we are having, for lunch, lemony basil soup. It's one of my favorites. And we put about two cups of riotini noodles. And my, this is a version with rabbits. So my mom has made this as a video. So we'll have the link to it above. So dinner for our first day of week four of the pantry challenge. Hint. James is going to tell you what we're making. Hint. Oh boy. Hint. So what are we hard at work making? Black bean lamb burgers. And lamb burgers are one of your favorites. Yep, yeah, it is. So James has tweaked my recipe a little bit here, but uh, that's okay. And we're gonna get these in the oven and get our burgers on the go. Mom, I didn't tweak it too much. I only put two extra things. Well, that's all right. It's still tweaking it just a little bit. Oh my, these are looking delicious. Jamesy outdid himself. Now look at those beauties. Mmm, so excited for these burgers. I'm glad James suggested it. Uh, this recipe actually we have a video for, so I will link that above because these buns are amazing and they seem to work every single time we make them. Oh boy, here we go. So we've got our burgers ready. Everything's amazing. We've got our homemade turnip pickles on there and also the roasted canned peppers. Lamb and black bean burgers. The black beans were dry off the shelf and we got the James got those all cooked up. And homemade buns. Doesn't get much better than that. And we're ending day one with some delicious homemade brownies that Alex has made for us. They are peanut butter chocolate chip ones. And they're going to end the night well. Sunday morning breakfast. We're having pancakes with home-pressed apple juice that we've had in the freezer. And also our apple syrup. But we're even splurging with some store-bought maple syrup because our pancakes have chocolate chip and peanut butter in them. And that doesn't always work so great with the apple syrup. But we're going to enjoy this Sunday morning meal. Well, for lunch today, we are keeping it simple because after having pancakes later in the morning, because as everybody knows, we are not early to get going on the homestead, uh, we're going to be having some tuna salad sandwiches to tide us through until we have our quiche for supper. So we have our uh, homemade loaf that I made last night, one can of tuna out of the pantry, and to this I add one quarter cup of finely chopped celery and a quarter cup of red onions again out of the pantry or cellar storage whatever but one of the fun ingredients that i love is homemade fiesta corn relish this is my go-to for any type of salads whether it's chicken salad rabbit salad potato salad tuna salad this with mayo just makes it amazing so that's basically the recipe the tuna celery and uh onions couple scoops of the Fiesta corn relish, some mayo, and maybe a little bit of salt and pepper, and there you have it. Uh, it'd be really nice to have lettuce at this time of year, but unfortunately we were a little bit behind schedule on planting some lettuce and have kind of just decided, you know what, 
we're getting to the end of January, so I think we're just going to wait until next year for lettuce or next growing season. But we're going to get these sandwiches made and enjoy, and we're going to follow them up with some applesauce because we have a lot of applesauce and we're really not going through it very fast because we stored so many apples this year. So uh, that's our plan for lunch today and uh, I'm sure it's gonna be fantastic and we'll be back for dinner. Well, end of day two and dinner is breakfast. We're having that quiche that you saw us make in I think it was the first or second episode along with some home fries from our multicolored fries and the rest of that homemade loaf of bread. So we're definitely making bread again tomorrow. And again with the homemade apple juice. So I think it's time for us to dig in and uh, get the end of the weekend here. Day three of this week, we're up early. As you can see, it's still sort of dark outside, which for us is pretty early. <laughs> but we have to take the cat to the vet for an appointment. So we are just having a simple breakfast today. Coffee, coffee, lots of coffee and toast with peanut butter and honey. That's as simple as it's gonna be this morning, but maybe we'll make it up on lunch. Well, lunch today is leftovers. We have leftover stew from the weekend, and we're also finishing off the last of this sourdough loaf, but no fears, I have taken my sourdough and got another loaf going in the bread maker. We find we make bread probably every two days. Um, depends if we have the kids or not, but uh, it seems to work really well and I know it's terrible. I do it in the bread maker, but it is so much easier and simpler to not have to go through all the steps and just let the bread maker do it. So it still tastes amazing. But anyways, we're gonna enjoy lunch and then uh, probably start planning dinner. Well, tonight for dinner, we are making a curry with mystery meat. One of my textbook moves from the freezer, no label. We're pretty sure it is goose meat. When you look into it, you actually can tell. But again, it was in the freezer, no label. We pulled it out. So we're having a goose curry. This is a really, really simple recipe. It's going to actually use up the last of our fresh Longkeeper tomatoes. Uh, well, I shouldn't say the last. There's a few more still in the fridge, but not too much left. So we've got two cups of cut up fresh tomatoes, medium onion, our meat, potatoes, and lamb's quarters, which we are substituting for spinach out of the freezer. Well, moment of truth, taste test. It's kind of one of those typical meals where I just kind of throw things all together and hope that it turns out well. That's pretty good. A little bit spicy. I put a little bit too much hot uh, chili powder for my liking, but... It smells good. It does smell good and perfect amount of salt, so I'm pleased. Anyways, we're going to go eat. Well, breakfast again this morning is going to be eggs on toast. Except for today, we're going to splurge and put a little bit of cheese on them. And there we are. The only thing missing is the coffee. Well, it is late afternoon and we are just about to have some lunch. And uh, kind of delayed because of being in the process of doing some canning. I'm making some lamb broth and... It's kind of influenced uh, decisions on lunch. As you know, I'm not a planner, so we kind of wing it as we go. Tonight, we are having gorgeous lamb chops. I've got them marinating, yum. Look at the nice thick cuts on those. Oh, these are lamb loin chops. They're gonna be beautiful. We never get our meat as a rack of lamb. We always just get it as the chops. Uh, but since we're having an amazing, wonderful dinner tonight, I thought we would go simple for lunch and use up some stuff that we had kicking around. So we're going to have smoothies. I took a bunch of fruit out of the freezer. We've got bananas, uh, bananas, strawberries, cherries, that sort of thing. Yogurt, which is well past date. It was tucked in the fridge downstairs. So I'm really hoping, oh, it looks good. Looks good. It said it expired January 10th, so we're only like two weeks late. And a couple of open packs of granola, some uh, berry granola and some chocolate granola. So the plan is smoothies and granola with yogurt on top for lunch. So hopefully this all goes well. We always keep a few of these little juice boxes for smoothies. Really no other purpose, but 
I hate opening a uh, can of apple juice or something like that just to make smoothies because you don't need the whole thing and then it ends up sitting there and nobody uses it up. So I'm going to pause you while we blend. It's my downfall. I like my smoothies thick. Now I didn't realize this until um, I got it all mixed up and in the cups. Then I forgot to put the honey in it. So hopefully it's got enough fruit that it's not too sour tasting. But uh, normally I would put honey in this as well, but I forgot. So anyways, we are ready, granola and smoothies, to enjoy some lunch. All right, I think this is probably one of the meals that we look most forward to here on the farm. And to be honest, it's actually a treat that really Chris and I only have because uh, Lamb chops are not something the kids love because of the fact they got to cut them off the bone, et cetera, et cetera. Kids, right? I mean, I can give them the same meat. If I make it all cut up and pretty for them, they'll eat it. But anyways, that's not the point. So our chops have been marinating all day in my marinade, which I actually have done a video for, and I'll link that above right now. Um, it's a very, very simple one, and they are so tender and just coated with this gorgeousness. So... They don't take very long to cook, so we're going to get everything else organized first. We are having purple noodle beans with it from the freezer. And baked potatoes, russet potatoes from the pantry. And, and a slice of bread will come with it as well. So uh, that is the dinner plan. We're going to get on cooking these. Um, I will admit, I cheat on my baked potatoes. I do them in the microwave in a potato bag. Um, so... Very, very simple, takes about five minutes, and then you just gotta let them kind of sit for a little while to kind of steam inside the bag. So we're gonna get those going, and then while those are steaming, we will get the uh, chops on the grill or on the oven. I do them in a uh, cast iron pan and put it all together, and we'll bring you back right when it's ready to go. Well, there it is. Lamb, russet potatoes, noodle beans that are all from our garden the parsley dried parsley parsley is also from our garden the bread is homemade and uh all in all looks really appetizing so we're about to dig in but we're also having our yellow tomato juice along with this tonight so not to toot my own horn but i just have to show you this because it is perfection Beautiful looking lamb chop. Mm. I always say, lamb for me is like butter. It's so good. Yeah, that's why we raise sheep. Well, it's another early morning again on the homestead, so toast and coffee are required. Lunch today, look at that. We're having the last quiche that we'd put into the freezer that first week because I want to refresh and put some new ones in. A little bit of potato chips. Now these potato chips have been open for a very long time, so they need to get eaten up anyways. But we're putting barbecue sauce from the pantry. Just opened another jar on top of this quiche, and that was from 2019. So it's a good thing that we're getting it eaten up. And Chris is finishing off the uh, rest of the tomato juice that we had last night. So... All in all, there's still a few things out of the pantry, but it's going to be a wonderful lunch and we're going to enjoy it. All right, we are now cooking dinner and we're having pasta. So we've got some onions and some ground lamb and a little bit of garlic in there doing their thing, getting cooked up and browned up. We've got two cans or two jars of uh, August stew, which we're gonna be adding to this for the vegetable content. And we've got some marinara sauce, which we're also adding to it. And of course we've got the, the pasta over there. So it's not spaghetti this time, but uh, still a nice pasta dinner with uh, ground lamb. And as you can hear in the background, there's some bread doing its thing in the bread maker. And there we are, all uh, ready to be dished up. It's uh, pretty simple, but uh, looking and smelling pretty good. And even though we did say we were reducing the amount of pasta, we uh, we are still eating a pasta dish kind of once a week usually. So. so we just finished our wonderful spaghetti dinner that Christopher made for us. And 
we were watching food theories while we were eating. Uh, food theory is a show that the, uh, or, uh, it's a channel, right, James? Yes, it's channel. A, it's a channel on YouTube that the kids really, really like, and we've kind of all started watching. And uh, anyways, in the episode, or actually, James, tell us what you're making right now. We're making mug cakes because the one we saw of him, his was one on a McFlurry mug cake fail thingy, my bobber. Which then led to us going, well, we can make mug cakes. Yeah. Which then led to what, Alex? Let's make mug cakes. Exactly. So we looked up a recipe and it wasn't that difficult, was it? So stay tuned because we're going to tell you how this turns out. All right. So moment of truth. James says it's cooled off enough to try. So it's time for the taste test. Ow. Yum, 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 yum. Great. Now, the one thing I will say, there was a few little tweaks, and I think it'd be interesting to try this one cup at a time. We put all of them in the microwave, so therefore it seems like it didn't maybe cook as well as it could have. There used to be these little box cakes that you used to be able to get at the store that you just mixed in a couple ingredients, and it was like this mushy cake. It wasn't a nice, like, firm, spongy cake. It was like this mushy, soft, chocolate, delightful cake. That's what this is, I think. But James has made the approval thumbs up. So I'm guessing we're going to be making this again. This is amazing. It might be kind of like ooey gooey, but it's ooey gooey good. This is like anytime I need a chocolate fix, this is going to be my new go-to because it's incredible. You might want to do it in a bigger cup because these did almost explode in the microwave. I think if you weren't watching them and kind of going in 20 second intervals, they probably would have, but well worth the experiment. And now we have a new favorite dessert. Well, today is another snow day. Look at that out there. It's a winter wonderland. And that means, whoops. Once again, we're making sourdough pancakes. Only this time, we're going to be using fruit from the freezer. Chris went down and uh, selected his top choice of fruits, so we've got cherries, peaches, and raspberries. Well, I have to admit, I'm really starting to like snow days. We're having some loaded nachos again, using up the leftover meat from the last time Chris and I had nachos uh, that had the uh, refried beans in it. And Alex made us some fresh guac because I have to admit, I splurged this week. As you can see, there's fresh lettuce on our nachos. I uh, did buy some avocados and some lettuce because they were at amazing price this week. Well, basically, same thing, different day. As I mentioned before, we saved those chops and marinated a few more. So we're eating the same meal with a little bit of corn added from the freezer with the kids tonight. I did break down and cut their meat off the bone, just like little children, because that's how they like it. Well, breakfast today, we are trying something a little different. We're still on that quiche, finishing it up, but we're also trying some avocado on toast. Never had that before, but since we have the avocados and Alex wants to give it a shot, we're trying, so hopefully it tastes good. Well, one of the things we are definitely discovering as we are doing this challenge is that we actually eat a lot more out of the pantry in the summertime than we do in the wintertime. Uh, certainly eating out of the freezer, though. That's a definite what's happening right now. But uh, we tend to have more time to cook those whole meals in the wintertime than we do in the summer when we're busy in the garden and things like that. So I'm not actually seeing the pantry itself deplete down a whole lot. But for lunch today, our last day of week four, we're going to actually be having some minestrone soup. Oh my gosh, just opening the jar, it just smells amazing. Mm. But anyways, we're going to get this made, have a little bit of sourdough bread with it. I'm going to have to make more bread. That's something I also am recognizing is that we go through a lot of bread. Um, that was something that I always allowed myself kind of that run to the store to grab if, um, you know, we were running short of bread, I'd just go buy a loaf of bread. And you didn't recognize or see how much you were actually consuming bread product. So now that I'm actually making each loaf, I am starting to 
toned back the amount of bread that we're eating, which is a good thing. Um, but uh, we're still kind of every two to three days, depending if we have the kids, definitely making a loaf of bread. So we're going to heat this soup up and we're going to enjoy a wonderful minestrone uh, lunch with a bit of bread. And uh, I might even splurge and put a little bit of cheese on top, although cheese stocks are getting low. We are going to be purchasing some of that for February so that we have a new stash to go through the month of February. There's a few other dairy things that we're going to need, like sour cream, um, yogurt, that kind of stuff that we will stock up beginning of February, and then hopefully we will get through the month of February. So we'll be back for dinner today, which I have no clue what it's going to be, but I've decided that today is going to be out of a jar. So it'll probably be something like lamb stew or something, but we'll come back and uh, show you what we decided. It's the last meal for our week four of the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. And we are having Cajun rabbit stew. And this was my last jar of Cajun rabbit stew. So next week, we're going to be replenishing. Uh, definitely uh, thinking that next week is going to be restocking the pantry because as everybody kind of knows, it's been following along. Not only did we do the Three Rivers Challenge, which does take place for January and February, but we also took part in the $50 February challenge, which starts next week. So in that one, we're only allowed to spend $50 for the month of February. And in January, we allowed ourselves a budget of $100. So we've also depleted down a few things, but we also have a lot that we can restock up with. So I'm looking forward to that. Definitely make sure you're subscribed and you've clicked the notification bell so that you don't miss any of those videos that are going to be coming out soon as we restock the pantry, do a pantry tour to see what we actually ate for January, and get started on the $50 February. We are going to have a shop probably next week at some point, as we did this week, because as everybody knows, we don't have dairy. But this week, one shop went to one store, uh, as you saw earlier, we did splurge. We got avocados and lettuce because they were on for a fantastic price that I haven't seen in quite some time. So we did splurge on that. Otherwise, it was all dairy. We had uh, milk, yogurt, and butter was finally on sale for under $5. So I did buy four blocks of butter, but they're not being used during this challenge. They've just gone into the pantry or into the freezer, actually. Uh, to uh, replenish stock because we don't like to dwindle anything down because who knows what the prices are going to be like come March or April. Uh, but in total this week, we spent $37.58. So we're getting pretty close to that $100 budget, but we're also not needing to shop until next week at some point where I will have to replenish cheese because that's something we did not buy throughout January because we had tons of cheese left over from festivities over the holidays but I will have to at least get one good size block, which I know costs us $17. So um, watch for that to happen and watch for us to start restocking. But hope you enjoyed uh, this week's pantry challenge. I'm trying to keep them different each week. I think it's kind of fun, but this one was very interesting for us to actually sit down and see what we ate, what we didn't eat, and uh, yeah, all those other little extras. But we'll see you next week. Wow, that's a lot of food. I've been watching this on TV for forever, and uh, that's a lot of food. They're a month into this, and they haven't even gone through a little bit of it. Ha, ha, ha. This gives me the idea that I could maybe live here. Oh, never run out of food again. Ha! Ah! I like that idea.